Today I want to share my story on why I quit my job with no backup plan and why it was absolutely one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but one of the best decisions that absolutely changed my life for the better in so many different ways. So I'm hoping by sharing my story and experience, it'll help you if you are kind of unfulfilled in life, unhappy with where you're at, considering leaving your nine to five or just making a life-changing decision that it can help you get through those decisions. So the way this video is gonna be broken down is I'm gonna share my background story. I'm gonna share the f this moment that really made me say I am done with nine to fives and I'm gonna quit my job and do something on my own. Um, I'm gonna share the fears that I had in doing that and how I overcame them. And I'm also gonna share how I safely and successfully quit my job so that I created a life of freedom. All right, so let's jump in the background here. From a very young age, I absolutely loved business. I loved coming up with ideas to make money, and my parents were extremely supportive in doing so. Uh, I started doing lemonade stands when I was like five years old, started doing car washes with the neighborhood kids, started flipping items on eBay when I was in my teen years, and then um, that kind of carried over into college. And I was never a big fan of school. Um, I have ADHD and dyslexia, so it was very hard for me to learn. My memory's not the best either. Um, I think that's a combination of all three things. So school was always very difficult for me, but I always latched on to starting a business, making my own money, doing my own thing, um, and I always valued my time quite a bit. So met my wife in ninth grade, ASL class, because we both failed Spanish. So thank God we met each other in American Sign Language. Um, really fell in love in high school, went to college together, and my parents both, um, incredible parents, very well off. They both went to college, very blessed. And they kind of just went along with the system of like, you know, you have to get good grades, you have to go to school, you have to get a good college degree so that you can get a good paying job and, you know, live a fun, happy life. At 15, I went on a ride along with a um, Monroe County Sheriff, that's the county that we live in, and I fell in love. I wanted to do law enforcement, it was exciting. I wanted to help you know, catch bad guys, drive cars fast, and uh, just you know, give back to the community. So that's what I fell in love with. And they said to not go to school for law enforcement because you want a backup plan, and you're gonna learn everything you need to know about law enforcement in the academy. So I took that to heart. Um, I went into college, we went to community college together, um, and I actually studied uh, PE, I wanna be a PE teacher. Um, but then I kind of switched around college degrees five times, finally came across business and finance. Uh, my wife wanted to be a teacher, so she went through the whole teaching program. We went to a community college at first, like I said, and then a four-year college. Got through all that, walked away with $40,000 worth of student loan debt, and I started to get into the career field thinking that this is it. I'm gonna keep taking civil service exams and get my dream job in law enforcement. So started off, I got hired as a salesperson for insurance sales. I did that for all of about one week. I hated the commute. It was a half an hour commute through the city. Um, I hated having to sit down at a desk and be told what to do. So literally a week later, my boss came up and said, all right, you can start making your, your cold calls. Let's get the first one under your belt. And I made that first call and Right then and there, I said, I had that this moment. I said, I'm not doing this, this sucks. And I quit on the spot, I went home. My mom and dad were like, what is going on? You just got this job, you just finished college, what are you doing? Really shocked, my wife was too. But really supportive and realized, you know, that's not what I wanted to do and I'm not gonna do something that's not gonna make me happy. So, ended doing that, I got hired by UPS, just helping with delivery drivers as an assistant, and then, to unloading trucks, did that for kind of like the holiday season, got let go. So finally landed my job in law enforcement. I thought that it was going to be the career path I definitely wanted. Um, we had about $35,000 worth of student loan debt at the time, so we paid off about five of that. Uh, my wife was still in college getting her master's degree in teaching. And this is kind of, you know, you know, the academy was awesome. The first year or so was pretty good. Um, we had no kids, so I was just kind of going into work, working shifts, um, having random days off and during the week, and it was okay. Uh, my wife was in college, so we had time to see each other. But as soon as my wife left college and started working as a substitute teacher, I was on night shifts, she was on day shifts, and this is kind of where the this moment started to happen. I honestly fell into a very deep, dark place. I fell into a deep depression. Working in an environment like that around, surrounded by inmates, 53 of them with one deputy, isolated all day for eight hours at a time. It just wears on you, especially being around those type of people that are committing crimes and, and not making good choices in life. So my whole identity kind of collapsed on top of me. I wanted to be this road patrol sheriff and just working the overtime shifts and the nights and weekends and the holidays and never seeing my wife. I just fell into this depression. I felt stuck. I felt like, you know, we had this student loan debt buried on top of us. We just recently bought a house. I was the sole breadwinner. It's just so much pressure on top of my shoulders and I absolutely hated 
the job. It got to the point where it was physically and mentally draining. And like I said, I was depressed. I definitely became suicidal and scared to be left alone. Um, and it was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my life. Um, it's hard to even talk about. Uh, it brings back, <laughs> brings back crazy, crazy uh, memories. And luckily there was one day, <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna get emotional telling the story again, but every time, man. <sighs> All right, Whew. this is the point in my life that changed forever. I had a bunch of this moments in my other nine to fives that, that allowed me to quit and just say this is not worth it. But this one, there's a couple at the jail that really kind of changed my life forever. One of them was I was working a, a night shift, nine to, or I'm sorry, 11 to seven in the morning, completely exhausted because you never get any sleep working midnights. I'm sure if you guys do, you can relate. Comment below if you can. Um, it was the end of the shift and the jail had, we were really low staffed and there was always overtime and it was forced overtime where they would literally call five minutes before shift change and you know, you're ready, you know, packed up, ready to go, get home, get some sleep. So excited the shift's over. They'd call on the radio and they would literally call out some deputies if they didn't have anyone volunteer. So I remember vividly, there's one morning, they're calling out, Deputy Klein, call down to the sergeant's office. And I knew what it was, I knew what they were doing. They were gonna call and say, hey, we need you to stay another four hours, maybe to eight. And I remember sitting at the desk and my hands just started to shake. I was that upset and that furious that I was gonna, someone else was telling me that I had to stay after I just worked a shift. I and mean, I thought it was complete bullshit. It was the situation I put myself in. They were low staff, they needed help, but I just hated that I was out of control on my time. And from that moment I called down, my voice was shaking and I literally just said, okay. Um, and then I got set on a constant, which is basically looking through a window at an inmate that's suicidal and making sure they don't harm themselves for four hours, literally sitting in a chair doing nothing more than staring at an inmate. So it was horrible. And I remember going home that day and just having this mindset shift that said, I need to take action. I am totally done uh, working in law enforcement and having someone else, working in a nine to five in general and having someone else be in control of my time. That was the first this moment. The second one was I had two vacations planned with my family and you kind of go into the sergeant's office with your vacation, you submit a form and you try to get those days off and I went in and I was low man on the totem pole at the time. You know, I only had maybe a year or two in and they basically said, we can only grant you this one Wednesday out of the two weeks that you wanted off. Sorry, you're out of luck. And I just remember again, being furious that I was not in control of my time and that someone else was saying that I had to come to work and reschedule or cancel the family vacations I already had planned. And I said, screw this. So I remember walking out of the sergeant's office that time and that was the light bulb. That was the this moment that I will remember the rest of my life that said, I am completely done working nine to fives. I need to take action. I need to figure out a way to quit my job, quit any other job. I'm done working jobs and really go all in on finding something to do for myself and working for myself. So after I went through those life-changing moments where I was getting forced overtime after working an eight hour shift, that I was denied all vacation that I wanted, that I never got to see my wife, that I saw statistics showing that law, anyone in law enforcement after they retire, that they die within five years. The life expectancy is literally nothing after you retire uh, because of the stress that is in that job. I really had all these fears. I, I knew I wanted to quit my job, but I had so many fears that prevented me from taking action right away. The very first one was I was the sole breadwinner, so it was money. Were we gonna run out of money? How do we pay off our debt and pay off the mortgage and stay afloat when I quit my job? I, it was a $50,000 job a year, up, guaranteed upwards of 75,000, health insurance, good benefits, pension, all that stuff. Incredible, incredible job, incredible career based on you know that type of stuff. Looking back, it's kind of funny to laugh about. Number two was failure. Um, I'm an Enneagram three, so I'm an achiever. And just knowing that there, there's a chance that I could fail and look like a, uh, a loser to other people, which was unfounded, obviously, um, that my parents would be disappointed that I've quit so many jobs and that I couldn't find success. And just, you know, failing at trying to do my own thing, knowing that there's a good chance that the very first business I try might not be a success, um, that I'd have to keep going, but the failure was definitely a fear. Uh, definitely leaving my coworkers was really hard. 
uh, especially in law enforcement, there's such a brotherhood and sisterhood of like, you know, the, the men and women in blue around you, protecting you, do, serving the mission and working together. It's, it was one of the closest knit bonds of coworkers I've ever been a part of and definitely like a brotherhood. So saying goodbye to them and, and trying to figure out what they're gonna think of me for quitting and leaving behind the pension and all that stuff, uh, that was definitely a fear I had. And then it was like the uncertainty. Um, what was I getting into? How was I gonna you know, get past all these fears? Um, was my wife gonna be able to find a job? Just you know, lots of uncertainty and being out of control. With a normal nine to five, you have a lot of security. You have a paycheck coming in every two weeks or every week. You have you know, your pension, you have your time off, you have your P, uh, paid time off, all that stuff. That security is what keeps people in there. And that's what was keeping me in there. I was secure. I was like, you know, this, I, I'm trying to convince myself, you know, I can do this for 25 years and that was scary to think that I was absolutely miserable and suicidal and trying to convince myself that it was worth staying because of the security. Those are all the fears. Um, if you can relate to any of those with the current job you have that you wanna quit, uh, comment below. If I'm missing any, comment below. Um, I'd love to hear the fears that you have of quitting your job. So how did I overcome those fears? One of the biggest things was understanding and kind of looking at each one of those fears individually and kind of putting out and, and literally taking pen and paper and drawing out like what's the worst thing that could happen for these you know five things. So with money, it was like, okay, we could completely run out of money, have to sell the house, move back to my parents. That was worst case scenario. That would suck, but I was willing to do it because I was so unhappy. I would move back into my parents in a heartbeat for temporary just to get back on our feet and figure things out. For failure, it was like, okay, you're gonna fail this first business, uh, but you can start another one. Like, it's it's okay. You're not gonna hit it out of the park on the first one, but uh, if you keep at it and you believe in yourself, you can do it. So it's just taking all those fears, writing them down, and writing down the worst case scenarios, and then figuring out ways to overcome those mentally. So now I wanna share my new perspective on life that really changed my life, and what it comes down to is I started to value my time far more than any type of money would ever bring me. So I realized that money does not bring you happiness, but time and the freedom to do the things that you love, to spend with the people that you love, is really what brings you happiness. And that is far more important than anything that is money related, is that time is greater than money. So I realized I needed to become my own boss. I needed to take control of my time and not let anyone else, not let an employer control my time, but actually take control of myself and to run my own business, to start my own business. So I really came across this activity that really put things into perspective when it came to time and how important time is. So basically you're 22 years old, that's usually when people start their careers after college and you wanna retire when you're 65, which is the normal retirement age you have those 43 years in between. And if you're sleeping eight hours a night, that's gonna be 14 years of your life sleeping in between that time. So now you're left with 29 years of life. And if you're working eight hours a day for 260 days a year, that's 10 years of working. So you can subtract that. Now you're left with 19 years to live within that working between 22 and 65 year range. And that doesn't include anything like cleaning or cooking or mowing the lawn, taking care of your kids, basically anything that you don't wanna be doing. So you can cut that another nine years off of your life. So now you're left with 10 years of life to pick and choose with what you wanna do. If that doesn't put things into perspective, I don't know what will. Life is so short and so precious that if you are trading your time for money and not fulfilled and enjoying what you're doing, you're literally just, let, you're signing off your life to a job that is not bringing you happiness. It's not bringing you joy and fulfillment. That activity and taking it down and really showing you that you only have 10 years of life to pick and choose what you wanna do when you're working a normal nine to five that's not enjoyable, really put things into perspective and just made me more and more motivated and hungry to create a life that I truly loved and that my wife truly loved as well. This really scared the living shit out of me to know that I was trading my time for money and that I, when I was 80 years old, sitting on my deathbed, looking back at life, I was gonna have so much regret staying at a job and a career that didn't allow me to be with my family, didn't allow me to have hobbies that I love to do, didn't allow me to reach financial freedom early. That fear and that regret just drove me and motivated me to go after it, quit my job, not have a plan B, and just say, you know, I'm committing to this process, I'm gonna make it happen no matter what. So this is a really good activity to do, is get a sheet of paper, sit in a quiet place, sit outside in nature, wherever you need to go, and picture yourself at 80 years old, which is the average life expectancy of someone living in America, and just kind of write down the things that you would regret right now in your life. If your life just continued the way it was, you're going down the same path, 
What are the biggest regrets you would have? Write those down. Those are so important because those are your whys in order to change your life and to take action and to get rid of fear and to create something that you really want to be doing every day. I think doing this activity of, you know, picturing yourself at 80 years old, writing down your regrets, it's really going to help put time into perspective as well. And also the activity where you kind of narrow down how much time you actually have based off of how much time you're going to be working and cleaning and all that stuff, sleeping. Um, I think it helps you really value time and, and make sure that you understand it's such a blessing and treat it as a blessing every single day. I honestly wake up every day, my alarm goes off and I just start you know, praying to God, thank you so much for another day. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you for giving me a platform to share my story with others. Thank you for giving me a business that helps uh, provide for my family. And uh, just thank you for the time that I have with you and, and my family today. So treat it as a blessing and understand that time is always dwindling and you can always make more money. All right, so now that you understand my background, the fears that I had, the this moments that really got me to the point of wanting to quit my job. Now I wanna talk about how I safely quit my job to pursue a business full-time without a plan B. And the very first thing I did was commit to it. I committed and said, I'm gonna take these moments that were these life-altering moments that made me never wanna do a nine to five again. I'm gonna write them down so I never forget them. I'm gonna keep them in my heart and that's gonna be my why. And I'm gonna commit full steam ahead and make sure that no matter what, I'm continuing to create a life I want, create a business that I want, um, that's gonna give me the life I wanted. So I just went full commitment, no plan B, I'm gonna make this work no matter what. There's no other option. The option of failure is, is not an option because I would have to go back to a nine to five and I was never gonna do that. I will never go back to a nine to five. So that was the first thing I did is I committed and my wife and I figured out, okay, what what's taking up our time? How can we basically remove that stuff so that we can start a side hustle, to start paying off our debt, to get our finances in order? And we turned off the TV. We sacrificed going out with friends. We ate at home, didn't go out to eat. We really got our finances in order, cut back on our budget, reduced our expenses as, as much as possible, started to pay off our debt as much as possible, and just continued to educate ourselves. I think that the system is set up to get you through education, get you the college degree, get you a job, and then numb you. You know, go home, watch Netflix, go back, go the rat race, live for the weekend, it's, it's horrible. So we turned off Netflix, we turned off TV, and we started to educate ourselves. We started to read, watch um, YouTube videos, take courses. Some of the books I read, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I Will Teach You to Be Rich, Work Less, Make More, The Millionaire Fast Lane, some of those are right over there. Um, incredible, incredible books, all about personal finance, business, creating a life you want. Four Hour Work Week, Tim, Tim Ferriss. Incredible books that changed my life and just totally changed my mind. And I think that is so important. One of the things that really helped me be successful is getting out of that rat race of, of being numb and, and saying, hey, I need to educate myself. I need to continue to educate myself. And I think that, that is so important. And that gave me the confidence to take action and do it. Started reading the books, started reducing our risk as much as possible, like I said, with our finances, started to pay off our debt more, started to uh, save a little nest egg so that I could live off of and not need to be taking in a lot of money off the bat. Because I knew, you know, starting a business, quitting your job, you gotta have something lined up that's bringing an income. And luckily, Brittany was able to have a full-time job that was supporting us. So we were just kind of putting a nest egg away just in case, um, but we were living off her one salary. So cutting those expenses as much as possible, having a budget that we actually stuck to was critical in making this a risky move, not risky. So we started our side hustle with our personal finance blog, The Savvy Couple, and we just kind of wrote content, learned all the processes, learned, self-taught everything for nine months, didn't make any money. And then on the ninth month, we actually made $50. And that changed everything. That's when I went to Brittany and I said, hey, I wanna do this full time. Now's the time to do it. We don't need my income. We have yours. We have a nest egg that's saved up. We have our expenses under control dialed in. Let me do this full time. We have no kids. Now's the time to go all in. So she blessed me and said, go for it. I want you to do this. I, I know you can be successful. So I quit my job, put in my two week notice, quit. Um, one of the most freeing feelings ever is understanding that was the last nine to five I would ever have. It was incredible. It was incredible. Um, getting emotional again. Man, just, uh, just so freeing to know that I was in control, finally, once again, after you know years and years of having someone else control my life and control my paycheck, control my time. It was so freeing. So quit that. Instantly knew that I need to get some freelance work, which I have videos on our channel about this. Freelancing is the fastest way to make enough income to quit your job. And you can do it on the side with just a couple hours a week, on the weekends or when you're off of work. 
take the skills you already have, whether it's writing content, editing videos, graphics design, bookkeeping, freelance writing, virtual assistant, like email management, task, SOP, whatever it may be, you have so many skills you already have, you can freelance and charge whatever the heck you want. Uh, whatever the market says, obviously. Obviously, the more specialized skill you have, like if you knew, if you were an SEO expert and you can bring a lot of value to other business owners, you can charge all an arm and a leg, you know, 50 to $100 an hour or even above. So easy. Freelancing is amazing. So I instantly started looking around for freelance work. I actually got hired by VIP Kid. So I was teaching English to Chinese students, 20 bucks an hour, making really good money. I would do that in the morning and then work on our blog in the afternoon to build our business because I knew long-term the business is what we wanted um, to build and we wanted to create passive income from our blog. So I was doing that. I also got a, a digital uh, marketing job. So I was making you know 15 bucks an hour doing that. This was you know back in 2016, 2017. So I was doing that, learning the skills I needed to grow our business while getting paid. So it was like paid education. It was amazing. I was doing that. I did that for like six months and then finally got to the point where, well, within two months, I totally replaced my income. I was making enough money that was more than my other income. So we were doing fine financially. And literally a light bulb went off that said, why did I not do this sooner? There's so much money to be made online with freelancing and with the skills you already have and just doing stuff on your own, becoming self-employed. It's insane. There's so much freedom in it. So really open up in a brand new world. And then within, you know, that three to six months, I realized we don't really need all my freelance income and it's taking away from growing the blog, growing the business. So I stopped freelancing altogether, went all in on the blog even more so, and quickly scaled it into five figures a month. Started to pay off our debt like crazy. I remember sitting down at the table in August and we said, by December, let's pay off the last $25,000 worth of debt. Brittany was totally against it. I said, this is it, we gotta do it. So we started taking money from the blog, $5,000 a month, paid it off within five months. We were completely debt-free other than our mortgage, which was another incredible, incredible feeling. And just more freedom was being built day after day. We were working on the blog. So continued to scale it and the rest is history. We turned it into a multi six figure business per year. It's so incredible to say that's such a blessing. Brittany was able to quit her job uh, the month before she put in her, uh, her notice as a teacher, left her pension behind, left her health insurance behind. We made more in that month than she made her entire year teaching. And that was just a sign from God. This is the time, you know, go all in together. We're going to continue to get blessed with this business and put in the work and, and make our dream life become a reality. So that last year, I was a stay-at-home dad with our, our one-year-old. And then Brittany joined me and the rest is history. We, we wake up every day super blessed to have a platform that uh, provides for our family, impacts others, motivates others, and it's, it's, it's truly incredible. So to recap, uh, in order to successfully and safely quit your job, I would first start by getting your finances in order. I think that's one of the biggest fears is I will not have a steady paycheck coming in. So really reduce your spending as much as possible without reducing your happiness and fulfillment in life. Have a budget that you're sticking to. And then from there, start a side hustle. Start finding freelance work online. Try to you know bridge that gap. Don't just quit have something in place that's already making money that you can jump over to, that you're not gonna be super stressed financially, that you can pick up freelance work or start an online business, a YouTube channel, a blog, e-commerce, SEO agency, whatever it may be, marketing agency, uh, have that bridge that you can jump over and start doing that full time and create the life of freedom. So I wanna leave you with one last thought, but before I do, if you found this video valuable, please hit the thumbs up, uh, share it with a friend, subscribe so you never miss a weekly video to help you create a life of freedom that you truly love as well. All right, so my final thought here is, unfortunately, you are going to die, I am going to die. Us as humans do not have an infinite amount of time on Earth, it's, uh, it's very short. And if you put everything into perspective, it's even shorter. So use that as motivation, use that as your why to take action. If you're feeling stuck, depressed, unmotivated, unfulfilled, just not where you wanna be in life, it's okay. I was in the same spot where I did not even wanna be alive. I was horribly depressed and I could not sense that it was just temporary. So know that it's temporary. Know that you are capable of creating a life that you love, that there are so many more options out there that um, you're not stuck where you're at forever, that you can take action, understand time is limited, and that you need to wake up and do something about it. Take a second, 
write down what is bothering you, what you're going to regret in life, and what you want your vivid vision, what an ideal lifestyle would look like, what your life of freedom would look like. Write it all down so you can start taking those actions and start taking those steps to create that life of freedom. And I just want you to know if you are feeling, you know, unmotivated, depressed, uh, unfulfilled, please leave a comment below. I can help kind of work through those feelings. As someone who, who went through depression for the first time and beat it, I want to be there for anyone going through that type of thing, um, feeling stuck. Let me, let me know in the comments. I'm here to help. That's why I made, that's literally why I made this video. So you can 100% design a dream life. Uh, you just have to have one of those this moments. You have to take action, use that as motivation, and every single day show up to creating the life that you wanna live. All right, that's it. I'll see you in my next video where I share how to escape the rat race step by step by step. And until next time, have a blessed day. Peace.